The Unfinished Fight – Battling the Cost of Living Crisis We've all felt it. The pinch at the grocery store, the wince at the gas pump, the dread when the rent comes due. The cost of living crisis isn't just an economic indicator, it's a daily reality for millions. Families struggle to put food on the table. Seniors are forced to choose between medicine and heat. The American dream feels increasingly out of reach for too many. This isn't just about numbers, it's about people. It's about the single mum working two jobs to make ends meet, the recent graduate drowning in student loan debt, the elderly couple struggling to afford their prescriptions. This crisis is eroding the middle class, exacerbating inequality and undermining our social fabric. We can fight back. This is our unfinished fight, the fight for economic justice, for a future where everyone can afford to live with dignity and security. The interest rate hammer, a traditional weapon against inflation. When faced with rising prices, central banks often reach for a familiar tool, the interest rate hammer. By raising interest rates, they aim to cool down the economy making it more expensive to borrow and spend. The theory is simple. Less spending means less demand, which should, in theory, help to bring prices down. This approach has been the cornerstone of monetary policy for decades. It's the go-to response to inflationary pressures, a blunt instrument wielded with the intention of reining in runaway prices. But is it the right tool for the job in today's complex economic landscape? Critics argue that this approach is like using a sledgehammer to crack a nut. Higher interest rates mean higher borrowing costs for everything from mortgages to car loans, putting additional strain on household budgets. Simply raising interest rates may not be enough to address these underlying issues and could even exacerbate them in some cases. The challenge is significant. We need to be very careful with our tools, understanding that each move has widespread implications. Collateral damage, when rate hikes backfire. The problem with the interest rate hammer is that it doesn't discriminate. It's a blunt instrument that can inflict collateral damage, hitting those who can least afford it the hardest. While the intention is to curb inflation, the reality is that rate hikes can have a ripple effect throughout the economy, often with unintended consequences. For example, higher interest rates make it more expensive for businesses to borrow money, potentially leading to slowed growth and even job losses. This can create a vicious cycle where people have less money to spend, further depressing demand and potentially pushing the economy towards recession. Addressing these complex challenges requires a more nuanced and targeted approach, one that goes beyond the traditional playbook of monetary policy. The bottom line is that relying solely on interest rate hikes as a solution to inflation can be like treating a symptom without addressing the underlying cause. It's frustrating. We feel the impact of these decisions in our daily lives Higher rates mean higher costs for everything, and it feels like we're the ones paying the price for policies that don't seem to address the real issues. From Washington to Warsaw cost of living on the ballot box. From the bustling streets of Washington, D.C. to the historic squares of Warsaw, the cost of living crisis is on everyone's mind. It's the dominant conversation in cafes, on news channels, and around dinner tables. It's become a defining issue for voters, and politicians know it. In the United States, we've seen the impact of rising prices on the political landscape. The issue of inflation has become a political football, with each side blaming the other for the pain families are feeling. Across the Atlantic, European nations are grappling with similar challenges. From soaring energy bills in the UK to rising food costs in Germany, the cost of living crisis is fueling social unrest and political instability. 
Politicians are feeling the heat, facing pressure to provide relief to their constituents. Governments need to find ways to provide immediate relief to those struggling to afford basic necessities, while also addressing the underlying causes of inflation. We are acutely aware of the pressures our citizens are facing. It's a challenging time, but we are committed to finding solutions that provide both immediate relief and long-term stability. Section 5. Beyond the Fed Why governments need a seat at the monetary table The responsibility for tackling inflation often falls on the shoulders of central banks, like the Federal Reserve in the United States. These institutions operate independently, setting monetary policy with the goal of maintaining price stability. However, this approach assumes that inflation is solely a monetary phenomenon, a view increasingly challenged in today's complex world. The reality is that inflation is influenced by a multitude of factors, many of which are beyond the control of central banks. Supply chain disruptions, geopolitical tensions, climate change impacts, these are just a few examples of the forces driving up prices. Addressing these root causes requires a broader, more holistic approach, one that involves governments taking a more active role. Governments have a range of tools at their disposal to combat inflation that go beyond monetary policy. Fiscal policies, such as targeted tax breaks for low-income families or investments in affordable housing, can help alleviate the burden of rising costs. Moreover, governments can implement regulations to prevent price gouging and ensure fair competition in the marketplace. Section 6. Taming Inflation's Fury, a Multi-Pronged Approach It's clear that tackling the cost-of-living crisis requires a multifaceted approach, one that goes beyond the traditional tools of monetary policy. We need a multi-pronged strategy that addresses both the immediate symptoms and the long-term systemic issues driving inflation. One crucial step is to provide direct relief to those hit hardest by rising prices. This could take various forms, such as expanding social safety nets, increasing the minimum wage, or providing targeted subsidies for essential goods and services. Simultaneously, we need to address the supply chain bottlenecks that are contributing to inflation. This requires investments in infrastructure, workforce development, and streamlining regulations to facilitate the flow of goods and services. Furthermore, we must accelerate the transition to a clean energy economy. Dependence on fossil fuels not only drives climate change, but also leaves us vulnerable to volatile energy prices. Section 7. Rethinking the Toolkit Innovative Solutions for a New Era The challenges we face demand innovative solutions. It's time to rethink our economic toolkit and explore new approaches to managing inflation and ensuring affordability for all. We need to move beyond the traditional focus on interest rates and embrace a broader range of tools and strategies. One promising avenue is to explore alternative indicators of economic well-being. Instead of relying solely on GDP growth, which can mask underlying inequalities, we should consider measures such as median household income, poverty rates, and access to affordable housing. Another area ripe for innovation is the realm of public-private partnerships. By working together, governments and the private sector can leverage their respective strengths to address shared challenges. This could involve joint investments in infrastructure, workforce development, or affordable housing initiatives. Section 9. Join the conversation. Your voice matters. The cost of living crisis is a complex issue with no easy solutions. But one thing is clear, we need to talk about it. We need to share our stories, our struggles and our ideas for how to create a more just and equitable economy. What are your experiences with the rising cost of living? How has it affected you and your family? What policies or solutions do you think would make a difference? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Let's use this space to listen, learn, and build a movement for economic justice.